thank you for joining me. If you're new here, welcome. If you're back after watching my videos, I thank you so, so much. This is a DIY upcycling channel where we take pre-owned items, thrift store, old clothes out of your closet, hand-me-downs, whatever, and turn them into one-of-a-kind unique clothes, purses, and accessories. And today, I want to make a pair of cargo jeans. They're super trendy. Mine I'm calling um, extreme cargo or combat jeans. And I'm starting with a men's pair of Wranglers. Men's jeans are amazing for projects like this because they're almost always cotton without the stretch. They have big pockets, deep pockets, wide legs, high rise. So that's what I'm using. Now I'm typically about a 30 waist. These are 36 waist and 36 long. Now I want them baggy and oversized, but I will be taking them in a little bit later on. It's just, just simple because we cut these open and sew them back together. It's a simple way to bring the waist in. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is seam rip open this seam. I already did this side. Look how cool that is. I have plans for this piece later. I need to crop mine because they're way too long. So how I determine the length is I put them on with the shoes I'm most likely to wear them with, make a cuff, and I want mine to drag the floor. I want them to be long at the bottom. And once I kind of get the cuff to the length I like, I stick a pin at the bottom of the cuff. Okay, here's my pin. It's four inches up from the bottom. I am going to go around both pant legs and make some dashes four inch just up from the bottom. And I will do it on the front and back. Now cutting just one layer at a time, I'll follow those dashes and get that pant leg cut off. Okay, so this is the bottom of the pant leg that we seam ripped. I want to make this my bottom. So from the bottom up, I am going to cut two inches off. Basically, that's the coolest part of this piece of denim. When I cut that original piece off, I forgot I was going to add these. So I am going back and measuring up one and a half inches and making dashes. Now this is two inches. I went a little, I went half an inch shorter in making this one and a half because I need room for seam allowance. Now I'm just going to cut those off. Okay, so now I'm just taking this bottom piece, putting it over the jeans, overlapping half an inch. Now I'm not measuring, I'm just eyeballing that and getting it pinned all the way around. Now I just want to get these sewn on. I'm going to stay close to the top. I'm going to use my largest zigzag stitch. I'll use gold colored thread because that's the color, the thread of the original jeans. I'm going to remove this front plate, slide my pant leg in. I'll go forward and back and just go all the way around. The next thing I want to do is cut these completely open on the sides. I am going to go to the outside seam and half an inch behind that, I am going to cut from the bottom all the way to the top. Now I want to seam rip these pockets off the back. And if you accidentally make a hole in your pants like I did, don't worry. You can just add a cute patch, sew it on with rows of zigzag stitching, and turn it into a happy accident. Now I'm laying those pockets on the bottom front of my jeans. 
I put the bottom of the pocket six and a half inches up on both sides and I'm pinning it on. Now I'm going to sew around them with a straight stitch and this already has stitching. I'm just going to follow that outside line. Now these thick corners are hard to sew through, right? So you can put it on a block of wood, take a hammer and pound those. It'll break up the fibers, soften the fabric and thin it out and make it way easier to sew. Now I'm going to some scrap jeans. I have a big basket full and I'm going to cut out some seams and some hems. I'm going to use my electric scissors because I have kind of a bad wrist. Now I'm taking a couple pieces of seam that I left a little bit of denim fabric on and I'm placing the seam about an inch and a half above my pocket and this is a little bit wider than my pocket. Now I'm just pinning them on. Stitch and sew right across the top on both sides. Now I have four strips, two are seams, two are hems. The longer ones are about a foot, the smaller ones are about nine and a half inches. And I want to sew, there's just still that little piece of denim right here. I'm going to go back and I'm going to sew along that edge but when I get to the inside of the leg, I'm going to slip these inside and sew over top of them. Okay, so here's what they're looking like so far. Now I want to make my first set of cargo pockets for about right here. I have lots of scrap denim in my stash. I made an eight by eight inch square pattern and I am just tracing around it twice because I want two pockets. And now I just need to cut those squares out. I chose this one with the hole on purpose. I'm going to turn it over, take sort of a light medium patch, pin it on, now I'm going to sew it. I'm just going to use a straight stitch, stay close to the edge, and then when I'm all done, I'll have a cute little patched hole. Okay, now I want to decide what end I want the top to be. I choose this. I'm going to turn it over and fold it down a quarter of an inch and press all the way along the top. Now I'm going to fold it over three quarters of an inch and press it again. Now I'm going to sew that shut with a straight stitch close to the edge. Once I have that all sewn, I'm going to do a top stitch. I'm going to stay close to the top here and try to stay as straight as I can, just to finish it off. Next, I cut out two pieces of denim, two inches wide and 26 inches long. Okay, so I'm going to turn these over onto the wrong side. I already pressed this one, and to keep it simple, I'm pressing the edge that's furthest away from me on both pieces. I'm folding it over a quarter of an inch and just going all the way down the entire strip. Now I need to fold the end over a quarter of an inch, press, quarter of an inch, press. And I will be doing it to both strips. And eventually I'll do the opposite end, but not yet. I'm just doing this to one end. And now I'm just going to sew these ends closed. Okay, now I need to sew this to the square. I already did this one. I'm going to just talk you through it for one second and then I'll take you to the machine. Now, this is the finished edge and here's the folded edge. This is my right side, this is my right side. 
I am going to put right sides together and the raw edge with the raw edge. And I'm not going to pin this, but I'll put my needle in, go forward back stitch, quarter inch seam allowance, sew all the way around. Okay, so now I'm a few inches, two and a half maybe inches from the edge, and I have to finish this one, right? So I am just going to cut this off. Here's the top. I'll come up maybe three quarters of an inch and clip that. I'm going to back stitch and pull this out of my machine. Now I'm going to take this end fold it over, fold it over. Now I can see if it's going to line up. I need to do a couple smaller folds it looks like. Now I'm going to sew that together. I cut it a little short, but we'll make it work. Trim, trim, trim. And now I can continue sewing. Going right back where I left off. Go forward back. Line these pieces up. And finish it off. Now I'm just going to clip these corners so that the corner pokes out nicely when we turn it right side out. And I'm going to turn it right side out and poke those corners out. Now I have to do some pressing. Okay, so those seams that we just sewed, I'm just going to press those open. Now I'm looking at the wrong side of it. Here's my seam that I just pressed flat. Now I want to fold it on itself and give that a good press. And I'll do that on all three sides. Once you get these pressed down by the seam here, I am going to top stitch this. So I will put it in my machine with this folded over nice and pressed and just stay very close to the edge and put a stitch. Okay, so now what I want to do with everything folded in, I want to lay it about where I want it on my pants and I want the bottom of mine sort of by this seam that we sewed on earlier. And I'm going to trace around it. So now I'm going to sew this and use this as my guide. I will start up at the top. Remember we pressed that side over a quarter of an inch. That's so we have a nice finished edge. I'm going to start this right at the top of my line. And this one I'll stay close to the edge and just sew all the way around following that guideline. Okay, so now I am going to go to the top here, fold this over on itself on both sides, and just about a quarter of an inch in, just make a few good stitches there. And I this is thick, so I gave it a good hammer treatment. 
I'll probably have to use my hand crank to get the needle through there. Go nice and slow. Now I want to make the flap. And I made a rectangle pattern eight and a half wide. Remember our pocket pattern was eight. I want this to be a little bit wider and I made it four inches tall. So then I took that shape and I fold it in half so that I have a crease for marking. I took a ruler, measured down from the top two and a half inches and made a mark. And same on the other side. Now I'm just going to connect that dot with the crease, the fold, right down at the bottom on both sides. And I'll cut these off and that will be my pattern. Okay, so even though I only went two flaps, I'm going to trace this four times because this one will be lined with the denim basically and just get them cut out. Okay, now what I want to do, I already did it to this one, is take two pieces, pin right sides together, and you don't need to pin across the top. Now I'm just going to go sew it. Quarter inch seam allowance around the edges and not the top. Now I'm just going to snip my corners off. Going to turn it right side out and poke out those corners. And I'm going to give it a good press. Now what I want to do is go to my sewing machine and give it two rows of top stitching. The first row, they're both just straight stitches. I'm going to stay close to the edge. And then the second row, I'm going to line the edge of my flap with the side of my presser foot and come in a little deeper and do another row of top stitching. Now what I want to do is, I have a couple old buttons that look like this. I'm just going to sew them about maybe right there. They won't be functional, just decorative, but I think they're super cute. Okay, so one more thing I want to do to the flap. I just want to add some little fringe like I did to the pocket on the bottom. Now, these scrap pants, I am just going to cut about half an inch off of this top waistband. I just think that's cute with its big stitching. Okay, so I want a couple pieces of fringes to hang from the flap on each side like this. So what I'm going to do is on this flap right here, I am just going to go to my machine and on the underside, I'm just going to stitch those on. Now my flap is all ready to be sewn on. What I'm going to do, I have a piece of cardboard in between the layers so that I can pin this. Now I am going to lay my flap, center it this way about half an inch above the pocket and I'm going to pin it. Now I'm going to go to my machine and just make a stitch close to the bottom on both sides. Now flip your pockets down into position and that seam you just sewed, give that a good press on top. So now I'm going to take this back to my sewing machine and at the very top, close to the edge, I'm going to do a top stitch and then when I'm done with that, 
I'm going to line this seam up with the side of my presser foot, which will bring me down about a quarter of an inch, and I will do another top stitch right there. Here's what we have so far. Now what I want to do is make the pockets for the back. And the construction is going to be the same as these pockets, just the dimensions will change. And I'll show you the patterns. We'll be doing pockets here, on the side, and little ones down here. Okay, for the back pockets, the pattern for the pocket itself is eight inches across and nine inches tall. The flap is the same as the other pocket. It's eight and a half across by four to start out with and then come down that 2.5, go to the center, same on this side, and create that pattern. Now, the strips here are 2 inches by 29 inches long, and we're just going to construct them the way we did the others. So on this flap, I seam ripped this Wrangler tag off of a pair of jeans in my scrap pile. I'm going to just sew it right there. Now on this pocket, I want to do some distressing. I want to sort of make a hole and patch it from behind. So first of all, I'm just going to draw about where I want my hole. Now I'm going to lay my pocket on a cutting board and I have a box cutter. Mine's a slice brand box cutter, but any box cutter should do. I'll put a link for it in my description. Now I am just going to rip it up. 100% cotton shreds really nice. So maybe go lightly at first to see what you want. I want it pretty torn up. I want it to be kind of a hole. Now I like to clip a bunch of these out of here so that you can see the patch that I'm going to add from behind. Now I'm going to turn this over and I'm using a darker patch so that it shows through from the front and I'm just going to pin this on and stitch all the way around it staying close to the sides. Now I got my pockets where I want them. Just going to trace around them, pin them, sew them, just like we did the other pockets. Okay, back pockets all done. And now what I want to do is make some smaller pockets for the backs of the legs. Okay, so the pockets themselves, this is the pattern, seven inches tall, six inches across. The flaps, Start with a pattern that's six and a half across, three and a half tall. On that pattern, I came down two inches on each side, brought it to a point in the center, cut it out, and made my pattern. Now, the strips that will go around the pocket, they're two inches wide and 25 inches long. Now these little pockets, I am putting 18 inches up from the bottom to the bottom of this pocket and approximately about an inch, inch and a quarter in from the side. Okay, the little pockets are done. And before I sew the big pockets on, I just want to do a little more distressing and patching. And I also want to say, if you're thinking about making something like this, try to find lightweight denim. It'll be a lot easier to sew. And plus, this is starting to get a little bit heavier.
here's where I did my distressing a little bit on the front and a couple on the back right here and right here now I'm going to start working on those big side pockets now for these pockets I used a pattern that is nine and a half inches across and 11 inches tall okay the flaps started with a rectangle that is 10 inches across and 4 inches tall and then from that pattern I went down two and a half inches on each side connected the dots down in the center and it gave me this pattern okay for the strips around the pocket mine are 36 inches long three inches wide and I had to connect some scraps to get a long enough piece. And if you miss the construction of a pocket, it's at the timestamp up in the left hand corner of the video. Okay, so now I have these big pockets and I want them wrapped around the side of the jeans like this. Now, we have these cut open, right? So we can't do that right now. We have to sew these back together. I have right sides together. The seam will be on the outside and there, when it's washed and dried, there'll be a cute frayed strip down the side. I don't want to sew it completely shut, but I need to sew it partially shut in order for to sew that pocket on. So I am going to start at the top. Now, how big your seam allowance depends on how big your pants are. If you barely want to lose any size, go about a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I want to go about three quarter at the top and I will taper it down to about a quarter inch. Now I will sew from the waistband to just about the top of this pocket. I'm only going to sew from here to here because I want this open to help me get in there and sew this pocket on. Now this will be a little bit trickier to sew on than the other pockets, but having this waistband, I'll come in through there, having this open will help just have to work with it a little bit. So. I'm going to go ahead and get this sewn to here. Now I have to do something a little different since I'm taking in so much. I need to lose this belt loop and I'm just cutting it off. You know, I could seam, seam rip it, sew it back on, but I don't want to. <laughs> now once I get this sewn, I'm going to go back over it with another row of stitching for extra durability. Okay, so now I'm just positioning my pockets. Here is my line, and I'll just sew it on like we did all the others. Okay, I started mine out in through the waistband, and so far so good. You just have to keep checking underneath, make sure nothing's in the way. You know, think of this as by the inch, it's a cinch. Don't try to get in a hurry. Kind of go one inch at a time. My mom always said, by the inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. <laughs> okay now the big pockets are done and i'm glad they're not easy but it is doable so now what i want to do is sew the rest of the pant leg back together just like we did the top part now I want to do one more thing to these with the sewing machine. And so I went to my scrap pile and I found this scrap 
I'm going to cut off the waistband, including the belt loops. And then I found one that's fairly similar. Similar. They're not going to be the same, but they're close enough. And I'll cut that waistband off as well. Now I want to put these waistbands at the bottom of the pant legs. I already did this one. And how I started was I took my ruler and I measured up from the bottom of the pant leg, three and a half inches, made a mark, and I did that all the way around the pant leg. Okay, so I'm going to sew this in two separate pieces. I want the button on the outside of the leg. So I'm going to lay the buttonhole end here because this is the way I have to slide it into my machine and it's going to come this way. So I have to start on this side with this one and I'll just start sewing behind that buttonhole so that I can it will still function and I can button it. So I'll start here, run it along that dashed line that I made and sew the bottom and come back and sew the top. Now for the second part of this, I am going to button that other strap and I'm going to turn it towards me so I can see better. And I am going to pin it along that line. Now I'm just going to sew this one on as well, top and bottom. I'll have to start in the back because of the way I slide this into my machine. Pin all the way around and I will probably unbutton this and sew down the sides. Okay, all done sewing. That's what the bottoms look like, super cute. All right, now I'm going to take them upstairs and bleach them. Okay, I'm going to use pure bleach. I poured some in a bowl and I have a rag. A lot of times I use t-shirts. I'm kind of out of those right now, so I'm going to just use a regular old rag. And I'm going to saturate my rag pretty good. And it may be a little bit dripping, pretty saturated. And I am just going to swipe over my pants. Sometimes I do a lot of bleaching. Sometimes I do just a little bit just down the front. But I like to see what the pants are doing. Sometimes they'll bleach, sometimes they won't bleach very well. Okay, I'll move to the next and then I'll turn it over and do the back side and then turn it back front and see what this is doing. Um, if your pants haven't started to bleach in like five, 10 minutes, Go ahead and rinse it and get, in the, get it in the washer because it's probably not going to. You don't want that bleach sitting on there. That's why I use, can use pure bleach because I never let it sit there very long. And I rinse, rinse, rinse when I'm done. And I will wash this in the washer on a normal cycle with soapy water. And then I'm going to tumble dry this and come back showing you what it looks like on. Okay, this is starting to bleach pretty good. I'm going to, it's only been about four minutes and I am going to let it set for another couple minutes and then I'm going to rinse it. 